There are many ways you can play Nintendo GameCube games in 2018. To name a few, you can use a Nintendo Wii and utilize the excellent GameCube mode. You can emulate a GameCube on the PC or Android based device with the Dolphin emulator, which we covered recently for the Nvidia Shield TV. You can even use a modded Wii U and a piece of software called Nintendo to play GameCube ISO images. We've covered that too. And of course, there's the real thing, and my personal favorite option, the hardware itself, the Nintendo GameCube. It's about time we covered the Nintendo GameCube on the channel because it's truly an excellent console. There's so much power and performance in this small little box, and it could easily stand toe to toe with the original Xbox and PlayStation 2. To this day, I still sometimes do a double take on the graphics of some of these games. They can still look superb even in 2018, and it's a credit to Nintendo and its hardware team for such an amazing system. The problem is, getting an original GameCube to look good in 2018 is tricky. The GameCube supports progressive scan modes at 480p, with some games even supporting 16x9 widescreen. But in order to utilize this, you need the very expensive official component cables. And I am one of the lucky ones to actually own a set. Now the story goes that you could only get these cables direct from Nintendo and only for a limited time, but that's not exactly true. I bought my cables way back in the day from a website known as Licksang.com for $25. I clearly had no idea at the time that they would become so rare and so sought after. The reason why these cables are so expensive is because they were produced in very low numbers. The first run of GameCubes, the DOL001 model, had the digital output as standard to allow the GameCube to use component cables. But this cable did not sell very well and Nintendo removed the digital output connector in the DOL101 model. Many people agree that the GameCube component cables offer the best picture quality for GameCube games edging out the Wii and its component cables. But what about those of us who want to use a progressive scan signal for the Nintendo GameCube, but don't want to spend the insane price for a component cable? Earlier this year, HDMI GameCube adapters started to come into the market, all of which utilize a mod known as GC Video. The author of GC Video completely reverse engineered the digital output port of the GameCube and the digital output chip that's found in the GameCube component cable and these findings were released to the public as open source. This in turn has enabled a few enthusiasts and companies to develop their own HDMI GameCube solution based on the GC video code, with the most popular and well known being the GC HD from Aeon Gaming. It was released earlier this year for 150 US dollars. While it worked very well, it was criticized for being slightly too expensive. We've also seen some other HDMI solutions appear including the Carby and the HDMI Cube. And because all HDMI GameCube solutions use the GC Video firmware, the video quality is identical. It all comes down to features and price to separate a solution from its competition. In November of 2018, Eon announced the GC HD Mark II, which takes all the features of the GC HD and has added much more, all for the same price of $150. So before we proceed, full disclaimer, this product, the GC HD Mark II, was sent for me for review, but you guys know by now that my opinions are my own, and I always call it how it is. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at the Eon GC HD Mark II and see if the new features make the $150 price point more appealing. So what's different about the Mark II over the GC HD? For starters, you get the same features, but it comes with an additional Wii component SCART port supporting additional video options. You can simultaneously have video outputting to both. This makes it great for streaming your GameCube without needing an HDMI splitter. It also comes with a 3.5mm jack which can be used for stereo audio out or mini toss link. The GC video firmware is custom for the GC HD Mark II and can be upgraded in the future. Now for some bad news, on the original GC HD the analog audio video connector was not actually used. It was a part of the casing for extra support to keep the GC HD in place. This meant with some modification it would work on a Panasonic Q. However, the GC HD Mark II uses both ports, therefore I can't see any way that this device will ever work with a Panasonic Q at all. 
not a huge deal as you can still use S-Video output on the Q, but it's definitely worth mentioning here. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at the Eon GC HD Mark II in both progressive scan and interlace modes and compare it to the official GameCube component cables. It's worth mentioning that the original GC HD was hard to connect up to some GameCubes, you really needed to force it in until you heard a click. The GC HD Mark II is much easier to install. It only requires a gentle amount of force and it will fit snug. From here we can connect up our HDMI cable and start testing some games. On to the testing. I tried many different games, most of them were in the 480p progressive mode. First impressions of the device are excellent. As someone who hasn't experienced a GC Video HDMI adapter before, my opinion of the GC HD Mark II is that the image quality is very good. Everything looks nice and crisp, and the color palette looks to be on point too. Although it's only 480p, it's a very clean 480p, and you won't be disappointed with the image quality. The GC HD Mark II allows you to use scan lines if that's your thing. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of it, so I kept it off for this video, but just know that it's available. I tested Super Mario Sunshine running in standard 480i interlace mode. You can clearly see the interlace lines, but the GC HD Mark II retains a very good picture quality. I should also mention that the GC HD Mark II is line doubling in this scenario. Now for the big test. I side by side it with the official GameCube component cables and for all intents and purposes it's practically identical. If you look very, very closely, the GameCube component cables, in my opinion, still has the edge with some minor color differences. But I think we can safely say unless you want the absolute best quality and don't care about the insane $250 price tag for a set of these cables, that no one should ever need the GameCube component cables ever again. One last test was the video quality of the HDMI as compared to its Wii component analog output. Running Star Fox Assault, I can't notice any visible differences here at all. Both video signals seem to output the exact same image, which is fantastic. As mentioned, this is great if you are a streamer or even want to send the analog output via a SCART cable to a CRT. I guess I owe you one. So, in conclusion, do I like the Eon GC HD Mark II? Yes, I do. I think it's a great product. It does everything that it's advertised to do. I really like the dual video outputs. I think that's a really cool feature to have. And all these new features baked into the product at the same price as the original GC HD really makes it a cool piece of hardware. Now, would I recommend it to you? That is a little trickier. Let me give you a couple of scenarios where I would say yes and somewhere I would say no. First, the yes answers. If you're someone that's on the market for an HDMI adapter for a GameCube and you are interested in doing things like live streaming where you need to split your video signal where you have a CRT or a regular display where you're actually playing and watching the gameplay and the second feed is being fed to a capture device, a product like the GC HD Mark II 
is ideal for something like streaming. I think it's the best way to stream your GameCube in 2018. Nothing really comes close to it. I think it's an awesome solution for live streaming a GameCube. I think there's a lot of different use cases for having dual video outputs, and it's something that cannot be understated. And having that built into the price is really, really appealing. Now, I will say that if you are already a GCHD owner, then I don't think there's any reason to upgrade unless you want to do live streaming and you want that dual video output. I think if you already own the product, the video quality is going to be identical. So really there's no reason to upgrade to it because you're not going to see any difference at all because the original GCHD works very, very well. Now, the other thing I will say is if you're new to the market and you want to buy an HDMI solution for a Nintendo GameCube, you have a lot of different options. The GCHD Mark II is expensive at $150. You can get much cheaper variants of the same product, which has the same GC video firmware built in, which means the same video quality like the Kabi, for example, which costs about $75. So there is a large price difference between a product that essentially gives you the same thing. And I wanna be 100% honest with you guys on that. You do have a lot of choices as a consumer as to which one you want to buy. But I do think that the GCHD Mark II has a lot of features and bells and whistles associated with it that really means that it's the top of the line product that you can get. Now, $150 is expensive. I will absolutely agree with you, but I do think it's worth the money and I do think it's worth a lot of consideration to buying one. So the choice ultimately is up to you. But as for me, I really like the product. Would I buy this product? Absolutely I would. This is definitely something that's in my wheelhouse. I do a lot of gameplay captures for different videos and different things, but again, the choice is yours. You can spend as little or as much as you want and get pretty much the same product at the end of the day for your Nintendo GameCube. Well guys, I'm gonna leave it at that for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. I really wanna hear your thoughts about the GCHD Mark II. Thank you so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now.